Hello. Welcome to another Facebook Live brought to you by SCHS of Somerset County. My name is Sigrid Solis. For today, you can only see my hands. <laughs> we are trying out something new. Um, we rigged up today's video so that you will get a nice aerial view of everything that we're doing today. Today we are making a ramen, which is one of my absolute favorite recipes to make during this time when the days are just a little bit shorter, when you come home and it's super cold and you just want something nice and warm to warm you up, something that's hearty and something that above everything else is quick, easy, and cheap to make, right? So the ingredients for today's recipe would be ramen, of course. Now you can use the, uh, the, the, the normal cup noodles type of ramen. I am such a big fan of ramen that I have all types of my home. I have fresh ramen. I've never made ramen noodles, although I've heard that it's not too bad if, if, you, uh, if you've made pasta before. Um, so the ones that I'm using today are rice ramen noodles. They've got millet and brown rice. Um, I think they cook super well. So um, I definitely encourage you guys to try out different kinds, different varieties. This one I like because it has quite a bit of protein in it, a little bit more fiber um, because they are whole grain noodles. So I'll be using that today. Um, aside from that, you'll also need some olive oil soy sauce. We've also got quite a bit of veggies. Now veggies you can change up. The ones that I'm using today are the ones that I typically have in my fridge and tend to throw into a ramen. Sometimes I'll end up throwing in celery or broccoli. Um, not broccoli actually. <laughs> celery, spinach, whatever green I have on hand. Um, carrots will sometimes go into my ramen. Today I've got some yellow bell peppers almost always onions. I shouldn't say almost, always there's onions in my ramen. Um, here we've got some uh, fresh sh shiitake. Uh, definitely feel free to use dried shiitake, especially in the case uh, if you're making your own ramen. I think this this is great um, to have to include some shiitake mushrooms in that broth. Um, also have some shelled edamame. This is frozen and it'll cook right in the recipe, or right when we're cooking it, right when we're boiling the water. And then we've also got some petite Shanghai, which some people I think call this bok choy also. It is not bok choy, but it's very similar. Um, this is a great green to have around. It's very tender. It's not as bitter as bok choy, in my opinion, not as bitter as kale. Although just like bok choy and kale, you'll wanna wash it the same way meaning putting it in a deep container of water, allowing it to soak and release all the sediment. And uh, definitely if there are any critters, yesterday I happened to find a whole caterpillar, <laughs> a whole caterpillar in one of these little guys. So definitely be mindful of washing these before you throw them into your ramen. And then we'll also have some garlic. I'm using, I'm not using fresh, I usually use fresh. I'm using minced garlic. And then I'm also tossing in some eggs, which will poach right into the ramen. Now ramen in the traditional sense will cook over, not cook over several days, but it is, there are several processes that are involved. When you make the, the broth, make the ramen, et cetera, et cetera. This recipe isn't as involved as traditional ramens, um, but those processes are very interesting and I encourage you guys to look out for those videos because they're super great to, uh, to know about. Uh, today's recipe takes place in one pot. It is a one pot type of recipe. Thank goodness. So I will start off by sauteing some, some of the onions and garlic in about, I'd say an eighth of a cup of oil. Just heat that oil a little bit. And definitely feel free to also use a, a bouillon cube or a stock or 
bone broth if you have it. I definitely encourage making your own bone broth because it's super easy. You just toss bones into into a pot of water and let them cook, right, for for hours without much involvement, right? So these will cook there. Toss in some of the now here for the garlic, I'm using about, I'd say, half a teaspoon of the garlic. Goes right in. All right, we're beginning to fry our onions. Nice. Got that sizzle going on. So just until they become aromatic and a bit translucent is when I'll toss in the red pepper and these flavors will just kind of marry, I think. Peppers and onions just complement each other so well. So I definitely love to include both almost in any kind of recipe that I make. And plus you get an added bonus from the vitamin C in the, in the pepper. People tend to think like, oh, well, lemons, orange, citrus, that's really high in vitamin C, but peppers are actually super high in vitamin C. And as we know, vitamin C is super great for our immunity, so. I love throwing them in whenever I can. So that will cook for a little bit. Allow that to cook. Now here, like I said, I have these mushrooms. Again, you can skip this step. I know that a lot of people aren't fans of mushrooms. I am choosing to make a broth out of these mushrooms, so they are essential to my recipe. Um, you can just add in a cube of, of beef bouillon or a vegetable bouillon or whichever kind of bouillon that you have. Just be mindful of the sodium because with those cubes, they do tend to be very high in sodium, so be mindful of that. And especially because this recipe already has quite a bit of soy sauce, not quite a bit, but it has some soy sauce in it. I'm using the reduced sodium, or reduced sodium soy sauce, so we're cutting the, uh, the sodium content, right? And that's the thing about using the, uh, the instant kind of ramen is that some folks will tend to just use the seasoning packet and those just tend to be so high in MSG. So that's something to be mindful, especially if you're trying to avoid a lot of salt in your diet. Right, so this will cook for a little bit. And now what I'll do from here while these are all cooking is I will put in about two cups of water. Right, ooh, there we go. We've got a bit of steam. Oh no, not the camera. <laughs> all right, we are back in business. <laughs> So about two cups of water goes right in here and then you'll let that sit for about 10 minutes or so until the uh, flavors begin to release. I'll also toss in a bit of ginger, which I forgot to saute with everything else because I left it in the fridge. I'm using this kind of ginger, which I like to have on hand because you can put it in the fridge and then it's got like these cool little pop out, uh, kind of like ice cube kind of just like an ice cube tray, right? So you can just like pop them out. So I'll just pop out a little ginger right into there. Again, ideally I would have sauteed it with the onions, but again, I left it in the fridge. There we go. So that's in. And then I'll also put in a bit of soy sauce. Now here I'll use about, I'll use the same spoon. I'll put in about one, two, I definitely don't want to go past that, but this is quite a large bit of soup. So that will just cook. You'll let that cook for about 10 minutes or so, right? And then you'll end up with something like, I'll show you as I transfer this. end up with a broth that's nice and dark like this, right? So this is 
has been sitting for about like 10 minutes or so. All the flavors have, have released. The, uh, the mushrooms have cooked quite a bit. The onions are nice and soft. The peppers are nice and soft. Now at this point, I'll make sure that this starts to boil a bit. Start to see some bubbles. At this point, at this point, this is when I'll toss in the ramen. Now what you can do is just toss in a, a ramen and let it cook in there. But for the out of interest of time, I will put in some ramen that I've already cooked. And again, this is a one, one pot recipe, so this can all be done in the same pot. And voila, here we have our ramen, which those noodles cooked super nicely. Here what I'll do is I'll just kind of break them up a little bit. And now, like I said, our noodles, they're made out of millet and brown rice, and these two grains tend to have quite a bit of protein. For, first, for some added protein, I'm also going to poach some eggs right into this ramen. Uh, typical ramens will do a whole curing process with the egg or a whole boiling process with the egg, which, again, you know, out of the interest of time and not having to do several steps or use several um, bits of equipment, I'm just going to do it all in here. So. Once the water is boiling, I'm just going to crack an egg and it's not room temperature, it's cold. I just took it out of the fridge and this will help just kind of keep the egg together. So right in there. And then it'll cook. I've heard of people doing vortexes, using vinegar to poach egg. This recipe is not as involved. This egg is just going to cook right into this boiling water. I'll toss in another one. Now notice I'm leaving the greens and the edamame for last because the edamame will cook pretty quickly. It only takes about two minutes. And then um, the greens, I like them to be a nice bright green and I don't like them to be too, um, too overcooked. So I like to leave them almost for last. Kind of like you would for like an herb, like cilantro or scallions if you're using that. And just to aid in the cooking process with the, the egg, I'll take some of the fluid, right, or some of the, uh, the broth that I've made and just put it right on top, just super gently, right? You don't want to create a, a hole in the yolk because then it'll just, it'll break. You don't want it broken. You want a whole egg. Right. So that is cooking beautifully. So nice. I'm so excited to have a bite of this. What's nice about this is you'll also even be able to tell how done the egg is. You'll see kind of like a transparent, um, the yolk will sort of start becoming covered by, by the egg white. So the darker the white gets, the more you know that the egg is cooking. So it kind of like starts as a transparent film and then it'll get a darker, darker, darker white. And then you could even at that point, once it's kind of like a, not as transparent anymore give it a poke and see if the the yolk is and again gently because you don't want the yolk to come out to see if it's cooked to your liking right this i would probably leave a little bit more but you know because of residual cooking and i still have other things to toss in that's fine so now at this point i'll toss in the edamame oh man and here we've got half a cup of edamame 
So this is about seven grams of protein. Again, this is surprisingly a very high protein meal. We've got about five grams per egg, seven grams from the edamame alone, four grams from the, uh, the ramen. So a pretty high protein meal. It'll keep you nice and satiated. And then you've got fiber from the, uh, the ramen noodles and, of course, the edamame and the petite Shanghai right here, which are going in in just about a second. Okay, so this thing is going to beep as soon as I lift this, but I just want to see if, if I can bring this closer to the camera so you guys can take a look because this is looking phenomenal. That is just so good. And again, it's not like the traditional ramen because that's even the plating of traditional ramen is different than, than the way you would serve this, right? This would just like scoop into a bowl. Whereas traditional ramen, it would be the, uh, the aromatic oils and then the broth and then the noodles and, and that kind of thing. Or maybe I, I switch some steps, but you get the point. You get the idea. All right. Now at this point, this is the point where I'd add in the... Uh, the greens. With these recipes, if you're using spinach, kale, what have you, chard, right, chard is a, another really nice green, a little bit more bitter than this. Definitely leave it for last because the greens cook a lot quicker. See, even, you can even see it's turning into a super bright green. And again, because this is boiling, this is piping hot, you can always count on residual uh, cooking. So you could even plate this and then you count that the uh, count that the uh, bok choy, or sorry, not the bok choy, the little Shanghai will continue to cook even while it's plated. All right, I'll just cover that for a bit so that cooks a little more and then to serve just in a regular bowl I like to usually toss a little bit of cilantro or scallions right on top um, today what I have is something called uh, furikake which is um, a seasoning it's been essentially made up of sesame seeds I think black sesame seeds white sesame seeds and then um, bits of nori. So I really like this because it adds a little more texture to it. It makes it a bit more interesting, a little bit more colorful. So I'm going to add this. And then I always like to include a little bit of lime right on the side. Again, not super traditional maybe, but it is to my preference. So that is ready to go. Oh man, we've got our egg here. So just take a look at that. That is whole, that is complete. That is exactly as I want the egg to be. And here I'll try to just get a quite a bit of everything. Some of the mushrooms, some of the peppers, some of the noodles. Great. Here, finally, let's see if I can get my egg to poke out. There's my egg. I might even crack it a bit so you can see what the inside looks like. Let's see if we can crack the egg. Oh, that is perfectly cooked to my liking. It's a bit jammy, but not too yolky. All right. And there you have your ramen. I hope you guys try it and change it to your liking. Let us know if you do in the comments. Thank you and have a nice day.